fences, cobblestone streets, and corner cafes illuminated my eyes. A festival of music, define of definition, of limitation. Words became sounds, became music, became language. Staccato no tees accompanied by rolling R vibratos, never minding inane P's and Q's. With every turn, new sounds lured me to private little nooks, differing and passing from one to the next. Waltzing Parisians stopped to take the time to dance to some old rock and roll. Bar bands became street bands with the help of nothing but sidewalk stages. Brass horns and bagpipes mingled with violins and Chinese opera. DJs armed with techno blasted through the marae, rustling rainbow flags with the force of sheer pumping bass. Stone courtyards swelled with crowds of youth dancing to the same rhythm. Sound waves transformed into the movement of the masses, pulsating in each grooving hip, in each thrusted torso, in each twirling figure. Dancers became water, faces among faces, ebbing and flowing, constant and fluid, rising and falling in ecstasy. Street bands became street performers with the help of a patch of concrete conspicuous enough to attract attention. I was an American caught up in Paris. Watching one of these French indie rock bands, amazed at how similar their music sounded to the garage bands I knew at home, I contemplated the idea that indie was universal in a way when I noticed an old man into the crowd gathered at the street corner. Red-faced, white-bearded, clad in a stained t-shirt that, that failed to hide the swell of his stomach, protruding so far that the shape of his spine had changed. Shoulders hunched, he seemed to carry the burden of the world on his shoulders, a penniless atlas of sorts, surrounded by pungent air of life lived, sleeping in metro stations, on park benches, in shelters. The scent of reality, the smell of a hard, soapless existence, no pleasing perfumes here, but reality in the smell of urine and sweat and salt and liquor and tears and strain and destitution. He cackled and clapped the music, mumbling to himself. His pleas to the crowd drowned in electric guitar chords, their eyes averted from his helpless gaze. Focusing on the band, they secretly wished that he would just go away and leave them alone because they had better things to do than to help this nasty, smelly old wino who probably doesn't want to clean up and, and get a job anyway. The space that surrounded him opened up with each step the crowd took, recoiling, repulsed. He approached me, my feet stayed firmly planted. He didn't ask for money, or time. I simply listened, acknowledging his presence, hardly saying a word. I looked into the eyes of the lost man, eyes red, bloodshot, yet, yet so deep and luminous, like, like bottomless black pavement puddles that catch glints of light on their cloudy surface, grasping for something sacred. Gleaming tracks of pearl streaked his face, guiding the tears that streamed down his cheeks when memories of what life once was floated into the drunken haze of his delirium, like long forgotten dreams. He smiled and laughed, offering me a sip of his wine bottle. 
clutched close to his breast in a plastic grocery bag, and he wept before I could even say, no merci. He remembered his old girlfriend, Catherine, the classical pianist. He remembered the job he used to have, the office, and the boss who fired him. He remembered his family, what they had, and what they lost. His distant gaze focused suddenly, and he remembered that I was one of the faces in this crowd, realizing that I was one of these that, that he disgusted so. I'm sorry, I must be bothering you, he said humbly. You're not bothering me, I replied, looking into his glistening eyes. Ma soeur, my sister, you are my sister, he cried, gesturing with a half-empty bottle. He saw a trace of hope in my eyes that lacked the scorn he was familiar with. The passerby often forgot that these eyes were those of another human being. I saw myself in his eyes, my reflection in these pools. Only six degrees of desolation separated us. I looked into the darkness of this old man and wanted to cry. It didn't even matter that our native language wasn't the same. He didn't even notice that my scarf was inside the Parisian way. We didn't have to speak the same language to know that we're only human.